Don't miss a beat, join the notification squad by clicking that bell, you'll get notified every time I upload a video, and be sure to join our Discord to talk and get help with your code. Hello everyone, my name is Best, and welcome back to a brand new video on the Source Squad channel. This is episode 6 of the Feud.js tutorial series, and in this tutorial, we'll be going over using multiple files for different components, so we can split our app up into different files and it all becomes really clean to look at and easy to manage. So in this tutorial we'll be making a Twitter knockoff that doesn't really look too good but I have made a design in Adobe XD where you can see how everything should look eventually and you'll see that it will be really useful to use multiple files here. So the entire application is our app and that is the entire screen and then inside the app we want to have a specific component for the navbar so we can put links inside of it and other things and then we have our tweets section where every tweet will display and everything then that has content and it has a search bar so we can search for separate tweets and that kind of stuff and then inside the tweet section we have different tweets so we have one two three tweets and then each tweet has content and a like button so we see that if you did this all in one file it would get massive and it wouldn't be really useful to do it that way but view allows you to uh, split it up into different files so you can easily manage it so to get started we need to install the view uh, CLI. So to do that, you need to type npm i minus g view dash CLI. And I've already installed it, so I won't do it again, but this will globally install the view CLI. Once you've done that, you can then type view, and you will see that it prints out some useful information. Then when we say view init, it will tell us that we need to provide some information we need to use a template so to to see the template we can say view list and we can see available official templates browser file blah 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 all kinds we want to use webpack because that's the easiest to use so i'm going to say view init webpack and it will say generate project in current directory uh, you want to say yes and you want to make sure that your current directory is empty because just delete all the files out of it because it will make new files inside of it so project name it must be all lowercase so just type in view or whatever you want to call it a description that's right author and we want to use runtime plus compiler install a few routers say no uh, use slint no set of unit test no set of e to e no and then you can say use npm and it will create our project for us so this might take a while because it will download a bunch of stuff and install all kinds of things but uh, i'll get to you when it's done So the installation has finished. Now we can say npm run dev. And doing this will start up a uh, view and it will install final things, set up everything. And then you can see your application is running here, HTTP localhost 8080. Then when you go to the browser and you refresh and you go to localhost uh, semicolon 8080, you will see that the view app has loaded and this is just a template that view provides when you don't have anything yet and you can already see that everything works then when you open your editor you'll see that there's a bunch of files you really don't need to pay attention to most of these um, everything is inside of the source folder that we're going to work with for now the index.html file will be automatically filled with a uh, view stuff and this is just a basic layout then you have a main file which uh, 
creates the view component. And then we have our app.view, which is the main application where the entire thing starts. So that is basically what we had uh, before with the entire app. And every file from view is, pre is uh, does have a view extension. So you can know that it's a view app. An important thing that you might want to do is install a view plugin for your editor. VS Code has a view plugin. You might have to Google what it's called. Atom has a view plugin and it's really useful because it allows you to have syntax highlighting and some other features. So this is the basic layout of a view, uh, view file. It has a template, a script tag and a style tag. And the template is what the components template is. And we used to do that inside of a string, but like this, we don't need to, and it will be really easy to work with. Then for the script tag, it will have the JavaScript that relates to this one component. And we provide all the components, the data, the name of the components, and we can import different components. And then for the style, we can change the style of this one component. And you can actually scope styles, which will we get in later. So then you can see that we have a components folder with hello world dot view inside of it. And it will be a long template with a bunch of stuff. And then when we go to app dot view, you'll see that it imports that one file. So it says import hello world from dot slash components slash hello world. So that will actually get this view file. And then inside this, this export default, it will say components, and then it'll put this hello world inside of that component. And that basically means that we can use hello world inside of our template. And it actually takes everything that's inside of here and puts it inside of our app. And we can remove this. And if you do that and you'll save, you actually see that view updates right away, which is really useful. So you don't have to reload or anything. You can just see changes right away. And you see that uh, the hello world part, the entire page is gone. Two ways of putting the um, different components inside. So you can do it like this. I forgot the name, but it's basically uh, doing an uppercase for each word, or you can do lower cases and a dash between each word and both work exactly the same. It's just a matter of preference. I prefer looking at the hello dash world. So I'll be using that for these tutorials. So what we can do now is we can delete the hello world. It'll show an error because we have deleted a file that we shouldn't have. And then we can remove these components. And then when we save, we'll see that everything is gone. So first of all, we want to make a nav bar because that's the first step in our design, having a nav bar. So what we can do is inside of components, you'll just say new file and then name it app navbar.view. And then I have uh, the view language installed so I can do template and then tab. It'll automatically fill in the template. So we have a template tag, script tag, and a style tag. And if you don't have this, uh, you can just type it manually. So inside of our app nav bar, we want to have a diff or a nav actually. A nav and that nav needs to have a, an h1 and we're going to call our application Twitter. So this will just create a component with a nav bar and then an h1 inside of it. We could use different list items and we put inside of here, but for this tutorial, I'm not going to do that because it's going to be really easy uh, design. It won't feature too much. And then inside of the app export default, we're going to put name and then nav bar. And that is going to be the name of this component. And you just have to do this to be consistent. 
So then inside of our app.view file, we can import the navbar. navbar. So what we can say is import app navbar from dot slash components slash app navbar dot view. And then inside of components, we have to put our navbar. And when we do this, we can put our navbar in here, app dash navbar. And when we save, we'll see that Twitter shows up right here. So we immediately see that it will take everything outside of this file and it will put it under the image. And I want to take out the styling for this because I don't want any styling on this part of the page. So we can remove the logo and we'll see that we have Twitter. Then we want to style this navbar and to do that, we can put something inside of this style part. And notice how the style has a scoped attribute. And this is something that Vue does, and it basically allows you to style just this component and its child components, but everything above it, so any parent components, it won't style. And it's really useful to style different components separately. So what we can say is we can say nav and the nav will have a uh, background color of light gray and it will have a width of 100% and a height of 50 pixels. And then we want our H1 to have a margin of zero, so it will align to the top. And then I'm going to use Flexbox to center the tweet. So display flex, flex or uh, align items, center. And it will center the tweeter right here. And then I'm going to apply a margin to the left of the uh, H1, so it will stick a bit out like that. And then inside of the app view, we want to put HTML and body marching to zero and panning to zero so that we won't have any space at the top. And as you see right here, we immediately have a working navbar. That is already step one. We have a working navbar and we can already do separate things with it. So that is going to be it for the first part of this tutorial. If you enjoyed it, be sure to drop a like. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe. And I will see you in the next episode.